Hi, uh, today we're going to look at simulating a depth of field. Um, we're going to use this photo here of a, a deer. Um, it is already slightly out of focus going back, but probably not enough. Uh, we can still make out that they're deers, but we can also see a vehicle. Um, we can see some sort of um, square man-made object and maybe a um, post of some kind. Uh, and we'll also want to get rid of the deer head in front of the tree as that's a little bit of a distraction there as well. So we're going to do this by blurring the background and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Under um, uh, your options here you've got Gaussian blur, various blur methods including depth of field which is the one we'll use today. But you can use these in different different circumstances to simulate depth of field. But first off, what we're going to do is decide what we want to actually pick as in focus. So we obviously want the deer, and because the tree is in the same plane as the uh, deer, we want that to be kept in focus. And we want the front of the picture, the bottom half, to be more in focus and to gradually diminish and get more out of focus as we go up the picture and out into the uh, the rest of the image there. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the deer and the tree from the rest of the picture. So I'm going to pick uh, the selection brush tool. I'm just going to increase the size of the selection brush and just start picking the deer and the tree. There we go, just come up this side. There we go. Uh, reduce the size of the brush. Come in, zoom in. And just go around, and make the selection. Reduce again, just so that I can get into these smaller areas. Okay, let's just have a quick look, a little bit more around the nose. Now we can refine this in a moment, but uh, it saves a little bit of time if you get this bit reasonably right. And just get the back of the deer here. There we go. Uh, down the front there is okay. Still missing this bit of the tree. We can increase the brush slightly here. We've got more room. Okay. So that's that's good as a rough selection. Now what we want to do is refine that. So click on the refine button at the top. Here we go. Uh, not too bad. Um, so I can just go around and let's have a look I'm fairly happy with that uh, that looks pretty good um, here isn't quite so good so I'm just going to run the matte brush over the top so I'm, I'm using the matte option here and it's basically telling it to resample where I paint and that's looking better and just this bit of the tree and this bit here. There we go. Now there it's, it's still got a little bit of red. So I can actually say this is foreground. So just click on the brush there and that will definitely make it foreground. And that's looking good. Right, that's good enough for purposes of demonstration, if nothing else. Okay, I'm going to feather it slightly. Um, now what that will do is just soften the edge so that um, it won't look so cut out when we uh, blur the background. So I've just feathered it slightly and apply. So we've got our marching ants around there. And what we want to do is copy this image. So we just do Control C, Control V, and we've got a copy here. Um, what we can do is turn that off for the moment because we're um, 
we'll come back to that one later. Um, and I don't need the marching ants anymore, so I can remove that. Now what I want to do, as I said, is, is apply a blur. So, right, so we'll pick um, from the life filters um, depth of field. And we're going to pick tilt shift because we don't want a circular one um, we want a linear one I'm going to increase the radius so that we can see what we're, we're doing and you'll notice the edges are going transparent we need to pick preserve alpha so that they don't um, it doesn't do that because it's running out of information against the edge of the picture now as you can see these little dots here you can control how much and which direction the blur is going to occur and we don't want any in the front so I'm going to move this is the first dot and is the the bottom edge and I want to move that below and it's basically blurring out to that point there so I just want to move this one off the picture completely so just move these two down because we want this to be actually in focus now back here I want everything beyond this point uh, to be out of focus so let's have a look forget the deer at the moment we're looking at the background um, we'll bring the center down slightly and we'll just open that up a little bit there we go so that's pretty much working maybe a bit more so let's uh, say 200 yeah maybe even more 250 let's say that's pretty good okay so we got our basic blur there um, so we'll accept that and if we turn on the cutout that we've already taken you can see that the deer comes into focus again now the problem is you can see round here that there's a halo effect and we don't we want to get rid of that so the easiest way to do that is come back onto the main picture again and basically use the in paint tool to remove the deer because we want the, the gaussian blur to blur the grass and not the deer so what we're going to do is i'll just turn the blur effect off at the moment and if we just come in here and take out take out most of the deer there we go okay and we probably also want to um, remove this bit of the tree up here maybe a bit more okay so if we turn the blur on now and now turn on the overlay of the deer himself you can now see that the edges are absolutely great because the blurring is going underneath the deer and keeping green in this case okay so final thing to do here or one of the final things is to uh, remove this deer head let's just do that Okay, and just uh, make that a little bit messy there. <coughs> Let's just remove that. Now, whether you use the uh, in paint tool or you clone, it's really up to you, whatever technique you prefer to use. Okay, so we because this is a, a live filter, we, we can still play with it. So I can pull it back. Um, I, I can move it down um, I can straighten it up a little bit if we want to um, it's really 
whatever way you want to do it. Um, and the graduation between the blurs can can be um, made bigger or uh, smaller. You know the transition. So basically, once we're happy with that, let's just take that up a little bit. I think I'm fairly happy with that. There we go. We've now got a completely blurred background uh, and no distractions. Uh, the only thing I'd like to do now is just increase the brightness slightly or the um, exposure. It's a little bit um, uh, dull and I can just increase that ever so slightly. Um, it's not affecting the deer because I need to put it above. There we go. It's affecting uh, both both parts of the image and there we have it so effectively we've added a, a graduated blur to the background but kept the sharpness of the um, deer himself uh, with no halos around the edges thank you